we had many black people who worked on the farm. But in the house, there was a husband and wife who I grew up with. The wife looked after me from the age of one year old until I left to go to school. And her husband worked in the kitchen and did all the cooking. And they were my friends. We were far from the next people. So I formed a fantastic relationship with them. And it wasn't difficult to see that they were treated differently to the way I was. If I walked with them to the little post office to post a letter or to put some money in the savings account, I would walk in one door and they would have to go in another door. And that was the first realization. And I, didn't, I couldn't understand why. But it was explained to me they were a different color and that's for them and this is for us. And as a young child, I didn't query it, I didn't question it. For me, that's how it was and that was life. I think it took a long time for it to filter through um, my body and my being until I could feel and think differently. While working and establishing a lifestyle and going through all the norms of growing up and bringing up a family, I really wasn't interested in the political side or apartheid or whether black people were treated differently or had different things. I was living in my world. I was doing what I felt was important for me in my little enclave and didn't see the bigger picture or get involved in them. I had no time. So much, much later in life did it really have an influence on me. When I could sit back and say, well, at least I can pay the rent and I can buy the food every month and I can stop that stress and that pressure. Could I look at the broader picture and say, gee, this is really not right. But the reality really came with the freeing of South Africa, when Mandela was freed and the fantastic feeling. Up until then, I believed Mandela was a terrorist. I believed he was a communist. I believed he was the enemy. I believed that he was leading black people to kill us all, to take over South Africa. And when this man came out of prison and had no malice and had a kind word for everybody, it made the most fantastic impression on my life. Yes, living in South Africa in 1997, I think it was, just after, a few years after South Africa's liberation, I was sitting in my study one evening at my computer and thinking about my life and I had been in Cape Town for seven years. My children were both grown up and educated. And I had, it, I think it was one evening at about eight o'clock in the evening, this overwhelming feeling of shame and guilt that I had got to this stage in my life, feeling secure, I've done my job, I'm enjoying my time with my wife, and so much has gone past that I knew very little about and did very little about. And with this exhilaration of the new South Africa and freedom of the ANC and of all the black people and being one country with 50 million instead of 5 million, I felt it was important somehow, some way to rid myself of this guilt. And maybe a good starting point would be to write it down and came across the Truth and Reconciliation site and decided to pen a little note just to say, yes, I'm one of those that feel ashamed. I'm one of those that did nothing.
I'm one of those that didn't see it and didn't get involved, and I'm sorry.